Using the following first-hand Holocaust accounts, this generation can pinpoint how things went wrong and incorporate that into their lives in order to prevent future atrocities. You have 15 to 20 minutes to gather all your belongings, whatever you can carry, and evacuate the apartment. And so my father took me in my pajamas out of bed. I was still asleep and I remember holding him, my arms around his neck, and he took me to my grandparent. Flames, and I, I didn't know what it was. There was like a cloak of silence. Nobody watched, nobody seemed to say a word. It was like everybody was a deaf mute. People didn't even look at the ghetto burning. Separating the Jews from their neighbors was the beginning of the end. Okay. A general bias against Jews already existed, which paved the way for allowing individual acts of prejudice, such as social avoidance and bullying. Segregation then created an us and them atmosphere in which there is room to believe that one people are better than all others. There were numerous things that could have been done in order to slow down or even stop this hateful process, which was the first step in the mass genocide. First, the government could have stepped in and recognized that dislocation was occurring and stop it from the source. Second, the neighbors of the Jews before they went to the ghettos could have protested this move. Last, if no one else was going to step in and help, Jews could have refused to move themselves and if the Germans violently forced it, others would no doubt stepped in. We need to be united in all action so as not to recreate in us and them and prevent another situation like removing people from their homes. Polish people thought that the, the war will be over in a few days because the Poles were fighting the Germans and uh, they uh, and so all the Poles, including the Jewish people, were running away towards, away from the Germans. I, I, would t I think I talk about it. I mean, I thought of it, but there is no, there is no chance. There was no way uh, that I could have a chance to run away. Giving up seals our fate. Once we try to stop to accomplish our goal or decide we lack the strength needed to do so, it will never g get done. This is because if we do not advocate for ourselves, who will? We must learn from this to take every opportunity to stand up for what's right, rather than laying low and letting the wrong ensue. Like five o'clock in the morning when they went to work, and my mother pointed to this woman on the sidewalk, and she said, slowly go over to her, because my mother and I were like estranged. I wasn't allowed to call her mother. I had to call her Mrs. or Aunt anything but mothers. It was like seven, eight. The one day she was my mother, the next day she was not my mother. Communication is key. Without it, we are left with confusion, which will most likely lead to hatred. When people are unaware of the situation around them, they get scared, and fear is an excellent and common motivator for hate. If we do not explain our intentions to those our decisions affect, they will probably become hostile towards us. By keeping people informed, we can rid the world of unnecessary prejudice. While not everyone is capable of understanding, Rose was a child who was ready to. She could have handled it. She should have been told what was happening to better prepare herself emotionally. Children are ready for far more than we think they are, and they are the future of our people. We are the future of the people. This very deep, dark history is left for us to grapple with so we can build a more powerful future. The director of the, the work that she did for him said, if you ever need help, I'll try to come to me. And he lived across the street from the cemetery. And from then on, he arranged some hiding places. Genuine kindness is what leads to success. Taking someone else into your house in order to save them, even though it puts you in danger, is an incredible sacrifice, one not everyone would be able to bring themselves to make. 
However, it is sacrifices like these that allow he, the human race to continue onward. But I was there with my uncle, and all of a sudden, my uncle grabbed me and ran into a ditch and covered me with his body. And I looked up and I saw those huge planes shooting everything and anybody on the road just to show. Uh, and those were not soldiers, they were just showing their might. Another more direct sacrifice is this one. If the world possessed more people like Rose's uncle, who are willing to take care of and protect others before themselves, we would live in a much better place today. A place free of bitterness, free of contempt, free of malice of any form. All of these accounts of good deeds that led to the survival of both Rose and Ted were deeds committed by an upstander. An upstander is someone who speaks their mind when faced with a situation that differs from their morals. If we sit back and watch a bad situation worsen, we face negative consequences such as death. However, speaking out and making the decision to change what is wrong directly leads to safety and success. I, I, I don't want the children, like my grandchildren, to carry the pain, but be there to speak up. We finally got our voice back in 1992, and we, it's 30 years, like I said, now it's, a, now it's second and third generation. Now it's generations that belong to our group because we hope someday they're going to take over. And we are getting old and we don't know how long we can hold on to uh, being the leaders of this uh, uh, World Federation. Uh, so, in a way, I'm, I feel sad that the, our children have to carry this burden of knowing of, of pain, and a lot of them feel the pain of their grandparents, aunts and uncles. But I feel now, in our time, what's going on in the world with anti-Semitism, that we need, that the children do need to somehow continue with sending a message to the world that it should never happen again and that we won't let us it happen again because we are strong, we have an Israel and we are not the orphans like we were where any, where, where in, lived in Europe and nobody really loved us. Now, we have a voice. And I think that the children uh, and grandchildren need to continue their voice to make sure that Israel is there for us. That's very important. Because if we, if we forget about it, uh, it can repeat again. And that's something that I don't wish on anybody, anything like this. So it's very important and I hope you keep it, keep talking about it and tell your, your children and so on what is going on because it's an important thing.